So we're moving into the vectors portion of our course, and a vector basically is anything with direction and magnitude. So when you think of a few things in real life, we've got some easy examples. Velocity is something that has directions. So for example, you can be going north, and it's got magnitude because you can be going north at 40 kilometers per hour. Displacement is a fancy word for distance. That's the vectorized distance. Displacement means that you can be uh, 40 kilometers to the east, and so 40 kilometers would be the magnitude, east would be the direction. Force is another common example of anything with direction and magnitude, and if you're in physics, you're probably pretty familiar with that. We represent vectors geometrically, and this is going to be our first example of how we deal with vectors, as uh, arrows. And so there's a representation of 40 kilometers north. It's an arrow, and uh, normally we define north as up, and 40 kilometers would be determined by the scale of this arrow. And so we can look at this arrow and measure it and use a scale. There are algebraic ways of dealing with geometric vectors that we're going to see in a minute. And so when we're using vectors uh, represented geometrically, length represents the magnitude and direction is indicated by the angle of the arrow. And so here's a super common question that gets asked when we're dealing with vectors. Uh, and it's a nice one because it applies to real life. Chris is flying north with a velocity of 20 kilometers per hour. And so if we had our scale defined, there would be our vector that represents 20 kilometers an hour. So if we were drawing it, we could say, well, one centimeter is 10 kilometers per hour. Fortunately, however, because we know how to deal with these things abstractly, we can just label them and work them out geometrically. Now, what's going to happen if there's a wind blowing? How do we deal with that when uh, we're using vectors? So we're going to say there's a wind blowing from the west with a velocity of 10 kilometers per hour. So we know that Chris is actually going to get blown to the west at the rate of about 10 kilometers per hour. So there we go. We've got two vectors. And of course, this is setting up as a simple triangle, which uh, we just love to work with. This one's a nice right angle triangle. Certainly, you could get non right angle triangles. And the question, of course, is going to be what is the magnitude of the resultant velocity? And so he's going to get blown this way. So there's my resultant vector. I've just added these two vectors together, tip to tail, and that's how I get my resultant vector. It's my 10 and my 20, and of course, to find the magnitude of that, I could use trigonometry, but I'm going to go the easy route, and I am going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Next question, of course, what is his direction? So we figured out the magnitude, now it's time to figure out what the direction is, and if I look at this angle, I want to find it out. And so I am going to use... I have the opposite side and I have the adjacent side to that angle, so I'm going to be using inverse tangent. And of course, opposite over adjacent in lowest terms is one half. And of course, I should label that as a 90 degree angle. So the inverse tangent of one half would be his direction. Now we're going to establish some standards here, and uh, there are numerous ways to represent direction, and you're supposed to be comfortable with all of them. We are just going to use uh, the 360 degree compass when we're talking about direction. And so there's my compass. Uh, there's zero, and going around this way, we count up to 360 degrees, so it's a little bit different than what we've been used to, the old standard position. So there's my resultant vector being zero degrees, and, of course, going on from there, we're going to use that as direction, all relative to north being zero. So that's the standard we're going to use just to make things kind of simple. Okay.